must be exhausted doing that every day. I am 55 years old. This is how I do it. I swim. I joined the LA Fitness, which I told them, look, I'm from LA. Do I get a discount? They said no. I swam. I have to eat right. I have to go on vocal rest. I have to live like a month. This is the hardest thing I've ever done. I did five performances a week in New York and it almost killed me. But eight performances a week, you know, you have the matinees here. I have one on Thursday and one on Saturday. So, um, but tonight was the first night. It was my opening night, and I played to three tiers. I've never in my whole career ever played to three tiers. It was just, it was, and the, the response, amazing. They loved you. So the British audience loved you. I came early because I wanted to do six performances, preview performances, so I could tailor the show to an English audience. I didn't change one thing. I haven't had to. An English audience, first of all, listens. They love stories. I can just see. They just listen. You don't get that in America at all. They're all ADD. They're on R Ritalin or something. <laughs> something to give them their ADD. You can't keep their attention. Here, people are quiet. People, yes, nodding. Yeah. Now you have to earn the laugh, which I don't mind. I'll earn that laugh. But when the laugh comes, it's three tears. It's like a guffaw. And I tell you, this is the most artistically satisfying thing that has happened to me in 30 years. Now, you, you, I love the way you, there was a bit in the show, like the way you said, um, oh, you'll have to buy the book because I haven't got time for these stories. <laughs> you must have like umpteen stories. So was it hard leaving bits out? Well, I had a, when, you know we were just talking about this backstage. My director says, do you remember when they locked us in that rehearsal hall? We had a producer who locked us in a rehearsal hall for about three weeks and I would, read from the book and I would get up and he would say now just tell the story and we found there were a lot of things that worked better on the page yeah. and then there were things that we didn't think would work on the page yeah and um, you know we've had to lose things over the years I have a wonderful story about Crocodile Dundee Paul uh, Hogan. Paul Hogan and, and we lost that I have another story there's an actress named Beverly D'Angelo oh, yeah. she played Patsy Cline in um, uh, no, not Patsy Cline. She was in Sweet Dreams, one of my favorite. She's been in everything. But anyway, we had to lose that story. You know, we just, and it's it's tailored now where I kind of forget. So every once in a while, I'll leave through the book, and I think, wow, there's a wealth of stories there. So, so we're going to have version two later yes, in the year, maybe. Yeah. The queen waves at me. I, I wave. See, I was staying uh, when I first got here at the Antheneum, oh, which yes. is across the park there, and I wave every morning. I'm not sure. I thought I saw her wave one day. There were some corgis and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Freedom. You know, I mean, you have to understand, we, even in America, you know, the boys, yeah. little Willie and Harry, you know, the boys, Wills and Harry, they were our little boys, too. Yeah. We've watched them grow up, and then, oh, that tragedy, it's like the John F. Kennedy assassination. Everybody in America knows where they were when you got the news about Princess Di, so I think even in America, we're just in awe, you know. Yeah. The closest thing we've ever had to royalty was probably the Kennedys, but, um, gosh, I don't know what I would get them. Leslie, it's been a real thrill to see well, you. Well, thank you. I'd like to meet Harry.